work with a scanner. A scanner basically reads whatever, it reads many things, among them the screen, that's why you use a scanner for keyboard uh, input. But it can also read files. Now, files in Java are represented by objects, the file object, which is located in the uh, java.io package. So some of the things before we start reading files that we need to import are, um, are basically the scanner and the java.io file and we will import the java.io file not found exception. This is an exception, you should uh, take a look at the video on exceptions. This is an exception, this is something, this is a kind of error that can happen when you're working with files and we'll explain why that happens. So then to start reading the file, what you want is to create a new scanner, right? You create it like this, new scanner, new file grocers.txt or whatever, right? So I have my file grocers.txt that I should show, probably show you first. This is a file, you know, it contains my groceries, for example. I bought three peaches, seven oranges, two pears, nine bananas, and eight mangoes. That's just a file, okay? Go back to the class. I'll create a scanner that will be ready to scan this file groceries.txt. And what I'm going to do, the scanner has a method called hasNext, which will tell me if a file has a next line or not. So what I can do is I can say while the scanner or the file has a next line, has next, I will print that line. Okay, s dot next line is that is that line. Um, this is really important because once I have the s.next line, basically I have that line and I can do whatever I want with that file. I'm actually reading that file and I can do whatever I want with that element. Here I chose to print it. Now because the fact that I put groceries.txt here does not guarantee that the file exists, I just put this, right? That we might have an expected error, an exception happening if this file is not there. For that we need to put we need to surround this with a try block and catch the file not found exception. That's why I imported it here. Okay, you need to have a try and catch file not found exception when you're working with files. If the file is not found, we'll just print file not found. So what this program will actually do is it will open a pointer to that file, grows through that txt. If the file doesn't exist, then I'm going to go here and print system out, print light, file not found. But if the file exists, while well, there are lines in that file, and each line, I'm going to print that line. For clarity, one can say this, one can say this here, string line equals s dot next line. That's going to be my my line and then I'm just going to print it. I can do whatever I want with this line. So let's compile this and run it. And you will see it printed out basically the contents of my file. Now, the next thing that you might want to do with contents is actually do something with them. So how about we add how many groceries we have? Okay. So one way to add uh, the, number of, uh, the number of groceries I have is we'll create a little counter. So we'll have an int um, item items counter, and then an int quantity counter. Okay. So for each line, the line comes in here. I have my line, which is a string like this. And notice that a comma separates the string and the integer. So one thing that I can do here is I can say um, that there are many many ways of doing this but one way that I particularly like is you can have these are basically I'm gonna assume that these are two strings peaches and oranges so I'm gonna create a string array to hold the two strings I'm gonna call it fields because this is the name field and this is the quantity field I'm gonna call it fields and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna say line dot split in the comma. This this function here, split for strings, what split does is it looks for a comma and no matter however many commas are there, if values are separated by commas then those values are put in an array. Okay? So now fields has two elements. 
the one that's to the left of the comma and the one that's to the right of the comma. Okay. What I can do now is the one that's to the right of the comma, QTY, I can, I can update the quantity, right? The quantity is going to be equals, it's going to be updated with integer parse int fields sub 1. So the second element of the fields, which corresponds to this number here, I'm going to make it into an integer and add it to the quantity. Okay? And the items, I'm just going to increase by one. So every time I read a line, the items go up by one. So this is the number of items, one, two, three, four, five. And the quantity is three plus seven plus two plus nine plus eight. Okay? And then I'll just print this out, system.out.println. Um, ah, this is, this is an, we're going to see something important here. I'm going to print um, there are items, items, and total number of groceries equals to QTY. Okay, now that seems to be fine, but it's not going to compile. And here's the reason: I have declared an integer items and integer quantity within the try block within this block okay within I'm sorry within this block so I cannot use it outside of this block like I'm doing here one solution is to declare these two variables outside of the try block which is okay or the other solution is to put the system out inside of the try block whichever is fine so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these outside of the try and catch block so they're visible outside of the try and catch and I can move them outside because they really pose no, no risk. Declaring two integer variables poses no risk whatsoever to the program. Let's compile this and run. And then it tells me there are five items. One, two, three, four, five items, right? Peaches, oranges, pears, bananas, and mangoes, that's five. And the total number of groceries is 29. 3 plus 7, that's 10, 12, 21, 29. So I have accumulated this. Basically, now you're in good place to read any kind of database file that you, uh, that you can encounter. You just create your scanner with a file name. <clears throat> and then, while there are lines in that file, you will read that line into a string and then manipulate it however you want. In this case, I split on the comma to create an array of however many elements and then based on these elements I did some computation okay and then I printed the line just uh, for fun it is very common to find uh, files with fields separated by comma those are called comma separated files that's why I uh, illustrate this technique stay tuned for how to write to files